Hey, hey, everybody. This is JoLynn Bright, also known as JLB in the house. Welcome to HopeNet Studio 2501, conversations about mental health and wellness. We're so glad that you have chosen to join us, either by your listening to us or you're watching us or both. Uh, whatever you choose to do, we're just glad that you're, you're with us. We want to thank our presenting sponsor, Hoydell. Thank you. Shout out again. We love you. You love us. And also our generous community partner, who has also made sure that this episode is possible. So we just want to make sure that we thank them. We're going to jump right on in, and we're going to be talking about, um, I think I told my guests that we're going to talk about like the newly married kind of folks, because we're going to bring some other folks in. But um, I was sitting down at my desk, and it came to me, we need to call this new love. (laughs) Isn't that good? That sounds good. good. We can call it new love or young love. And um, as our guests today are Jaren and Kendra Collier. So we want to say hi to you guys. Hello. Thank Thank you you for having us. Yes. And and the thing is, um, I do know them briefly. I think I met you guys, what, like a year ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very close. And so we do consider ourselves friends. And um, we're that thing that I call it bonded for life. So don't even try to act like you don't know me (laughs) kind of thing. And um, Jaren cracks me up because he calls me auntie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He said, Joanne, that's what we call you at my house. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that is your nickname for us. It's, it's so now tradition. it'll be now Auntie JLB. Oh, yeah. uh-huh. Okay, oh, we'll do sure. that. Uh-huh. And, and another cool thing is for Jaren, which is really recent, is that you've said yes to being a board member for HopeNet, mm-hmm. um, which um, this podcast belongs to. So we want to say congratulations and yeah. thank you for saying yes to that. Yeah, I probably do appreciate, I appreciate overall the opportunity for even being able to step into this stage and being able to use my presence. And at this time period, I feel like it is needed. And I feel like at the same mm-hmm. time, I've prayed to be a, a bigger impact and it kind of just let itself all together into that place. So it's been Isn't great. that too funny? Yeah, yeah. I just, and before I let Kendra, Kendra, I'm going to pick on him. Can I, let me pick on him real quick because I remember meeting you a year ago and you're like oh I don't know how everything's gonna come together and yeah. you know I'm gonna be graduating and I'm gonna be a therapist and maybe I won't have any clients and then now the last time I saw him he's like oh yeah I have a wait list <laughs> oh yeah it's it's intense for sure yeah it's, it's crazy how those seasons change it's crazy how those seasons change and it's been a blessing it's been a blessing yeah and the yeah. thing is isn't it interesting that when you trust the process that what comes about mm-hmm. and all that and I think the the main person that was saying this is going to be okay was Kendra. Mm -hmm. She was the one that was saying, it's going to, it's going to be all right. It's going to be great. And we're looking forward to whatever God has for us. Mm -hmm. So Miss Kendra, the the voice (laughs) in the house, (laughs) talk to, talk to me, say hi, say hi to our people. Hello everyone. (laughs) Um, Are you ready for this to even talk about this whole relationship thing? Probably one of my favorite things besides meeting with people with grief. I really do enjoy that. And I enjoy seeing older people like mm-hmm. 70 plus. I really enjoy that probably because I'm older, but I really love marriage. It just always just hangs out. Sometimes marriage counseling really um, puts people on edge, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I, it, it has been my love probably from the beginning and still now the beginning of my career now. So Getting you guys on, just trying to think, okay, how can we bring in some folks? I really want to just feature young love and mm-hmm. then also middle love mm-hmm. <laughs> and then seasoned love, you know, kind mm-hmm. of thing. So you are starting with you guys. Well, Isn't thank you. We're honored. Hey, we appreciate it for sure. <laughs> you never know. I did, I did, I, you guys know that I did send them some preliminary questions. So they wouldn't just be totally like, oh, no, don't be trying to get it all into our business. But I do <laughs> want people to know what you want them to know about you. So I'm going to start with you, Kendra. Okay. Like, tell us your story, and then we'll get to the couple story. And then okay. Jaren, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm a Wichita native, mm. born and raised. Um, here I, uh, went to high school here and then went to Avila University in Kansas City. Okay. Um, and, um, that's where I met Jaren. At Avila? At Avila. Yeah. And it's so funny, I think, when you guys told me that 
I had a friend that went there years ago, Mm -hmm. and that's how I first heard of it. And so y'all were kind of shocked that I even knew where that was. We were because it's so small. Yeah. (laughs) Some people in Kansas City don't even don't even know it existed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I played basketball there Mm -hmm. um, and then graduated with my business degree. Um, And then we decided to move back to Wichita so we could be closer to one of our families. Um, And I started uh, working and getting my appraisal license. Mm. So I am an appraiser. Yay. Which is that. Which is unique in itself. Mm -hmm, Because I don't have a whole lot of friends that are appraisers. Mm -hmm. So um, I can say now that I do. Yes. Okay, good. (laughs) I love that. Jaren, mm-hmm. jump in. Tell us about what do you want us to know? Everybody's probably saying, where is he from? Like I like, <laughs> like I, I did the first time. Like, where oh, yeah. are you from? Because I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, I am from a small city called Iron City, Georgia. City of about 400. Went to high school in a city called Cogwit. It was a city of about 1,800. So I was around about 2,000 people right. most of my life. I even tell people now where I grew up from, um, the Walmart is the local mall. That's where people go to hang out. I mean, literally, people will go <laughs> hang, hang out of the mall that's the, at that's, Walmart. That's, that's the hangout spot. And if you go, if I go back now, it's like a homecoming. Like, people will literally call me from di- every direction. So like, meet, us, to, meet us at the mall. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Walmart. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, I mean, me, yeah, I'm, I'm from I'm from Iron City, Georgia, southwest Georgia. It's about 30 minutes um, north of the Florida border, about 30 minutes east of the Alabama border. So mm-hmm. very, very far southwest Georgia. So... That's where I was born and raised. Um, grew up in a single parent household. Very close family, but um, I mean, overall, at the same time, I mean, we had our ups and downs. At the same time, I felt like football was my thing to kind of get me somewhere, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, I just didn't know where it would get me. I felt like football would be my thing to be the long term thing, but at the same time, it really wasn't. It was just something to kind of get me somewhere out of out of Georgia. Um, at that time period, I went to a school in uh, Montgomery, Alabama from Georgia initially out of high school. Mm-hmm. Didn't okay. really enjoy it just because of Montgomery. I feel like I still tell people to this day, Montgomery has a lot of racial tension still. Mm-hmm. And I just didn't, I never felt comfortable there. Okay. So I was there for a year, ended up coming back home for a couple of years, kind of got myself back grounded. Yet me and my mom knew that Georgia wasn't it for me. Okay. So I ended up trying to figure out like, what could I do to get myself the furthest away from Georgia? And I, I didn't even want to visit. I just wanted to go somewhere yeah so um kansas city was the school was, a, was the school avalu was the school that kind of recruited me kind of made me feel pretty good about myself and they um offered me what i was looking for i went there for my for, for the first time going never had a doubt i was there for the fall of 2010 kendra came in spring of 2011 um we graduated in 13 um, she graduated her business degree and I got my um, bachelor's in psychology. And um, okay. from when I got here first, I was a paraeducator for USD 259. That's right. Yeah, for I did, the school system. did that five yeah. or six years, even though it was tense. It was it was it was pleasurable. It was passion work to a point where I just felt like I was doing the right thing. I just felt like I couldn't connect to the point where I wanted to. And that's kind of where the therapy intertwined and mix happened. And um, I had my own journey, ups and downs with that in itself. And I okay. feel like I myself through that journey kind of found the, the program. And that's where I myself am now. A year later, have been licensed and with the LMFT license. So yeah, it's been nice to be a, a therapist. I love that. Like yeah. that's it. I mean, for, way from the 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 boonies of Georgia uh-huh. to Kansas. Yes, and yes. you end up being becoming a marriage and family therapist eventually on this journey. I really, I always like to hear people's journeys. Like, how did they get to where where they are today? And I, I want. Shout out. We do have to do a shout out to Friends University, mm-hmm. the Marriage and Family Therapy Program. Absolutely. So, hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> yeah. So um, that is my alma mater. And so one day we'll have to get together and I will tell my story yeah. about how in the world did I get there? I didn't even know what that was, mm-hmm. you know. I want you guys to talk a little bit about sports. I mean, I'm, I'm, I didn't know that about both of you. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Kendra, this whole basketball journey, mm-hmm. like, and I, I didn't even know Avila had a basketball team or yeah. a football team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a little humble brag. Okay, do <laughs> it. Do it. Um, <laughs> the basketball team that I was on yeah. at Avila at that time, mm-hmm. we went to nationals. Ooh. And because of that, I am in the Hall of Fame up there. Oh, you just gave me the chills, girl. Okay, I love it. I Congratulations. Didn't get, yeah, basketball was um, kind of my outlet um, with coping with stress. 
Mm -hmm. Um, And I really enjoyed it. And I really loved the people I met. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I always just continued to push through and play. Okay. Um, But it did do a number on my body. (laughs) Mm. Um, Okay. But I am forever grateful because that's what ultimately um, God led me there ultimately to meet Jaren. Okay. Mm -hmm. So Jaren, football, you talked a little bit about that's kind of like my my life kind of thing. And it was probably the ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. out or beyond. Uh huh. Like football for me, is, and for most kids in in Georgia altogether, like most people know, the South is being like a big space for sports as far as football goes, and it's this big thing. Mm-hmm. Yet they fail to realize that most of those kids do it because it's their only outlet to like even have some kind of pleasure, have some kind of community, and really finding themselves. And for myself, I felt like football was my first like real good like family. I mean, of course, my family has always been great. I love my family to death. At the same time, like football. Football gave me something else. It gave me my own identity. And right. I felt like through that, even to this day, I feel like college sports especially kind of led, we, we talk about it all the time, about how much discipline and how much it like helps mm-hmm. us day to day just be a better person. Now, of course, you have your ups and downs with it. Yet, if you can kind of take away the good tools of it, it's kind of made us better people in the long term. But I feel like, yeah, like you said, football was, if I didn't play football, I definitely didn't don't, don't see myself being on the trajectory of where I am now. So it was exactly mm-hmm. what I needed when I did need it. I still tell people I have one more year of eligibility <laughs> just in case I need the NIL deal, but we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm following Deion Sanders hey. in Colorado. Mm-hmm. Okay. You want me to, he's not hard to find. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah. But no, we need you here in the city, so we're not, yeah, we're not trying to get, get you get to it. do that. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is, I wonder, did you ever think that it would, Kansas, like, was Kansas ever even on your radar? Like, you're a native Kansan, mm-hmm. and so... Here we are, ended up in Kansas. Yeah, that's it's actually a very interesting um, segue because, okay, the school I went to in um, Alabama, the name was Faulkner. It was in Montgomery. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same place I found Faulkner, I also mm-hmm. saw Hutchinson. I also saw Butler. Okay. And, they, and they offered me as well. And I was like, Kansas? Kansas? What do I look like going to Kansas? <laughs> and, and everything in my mindset was, was literally and, tumbleweeds you know. and everything <laughs> just straight. Everything you would see off gun smoke was what I still saw Kansas <laughs> as. And my family still to this day in some mindset still believe that I mean it's, it's crazy to sit up and think about like how <laughs> that transition and how God had his hand on that whole position so I mean it's, it's interesting and now I love Kansas I love seeing the tractors that's on the highway I love seeing different things that you see a deer getting hit on Maze Road I mean it's just different things <laughs> okay. it's like yeah how, like we're in we're in the, the country animal activists are not going to look like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, caveat. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was just the reminder of like, oh, Wichita still is like yeah. very country. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It has yeah. Very. Mm-hmm. yeah. My husband's from Pratt, and so oh, he calls yes. it Western Kansas. I'm like, that's not that far west. <laughs> I lived in Western Kansas. Like, no, no, no. Okay, Kendra, you said something. You said I think the the journey to Avila mm-hmm. and playing basketball for them is what I what was supposed to happen, so I could meet Jaron. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let you start. About your story, your love story. Um, okay. So prior to meeting Jaren, I was in a bad relationship that I'd recently got out of. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of it, my prayer was very specific that the next person I meet would be the last person I'm with. Mm. Um, and several months later, um, that's when I met Jaren. Okay. And that, and, um, he's checking you out on campus. (laughs) <laughs> let's say let's make it good and say, yeah. no I'm just playing actually he was it's funny because we were talking about this last night and I was like are you gonna say you slid into my DMs because <laughs> he did that's, yeah, that's how, that's how but that's how like it. that's how we did it back in the day yeah um <laughs> what is a DM like a direct message like on Facebook but, but with, some people look, yeah when people hear this like 20 <laughs> years from now they're like what mm-hmm. you're yeah. so right yes yeah, for sure. um yeah so that's how we connected um, and apparently you accepted you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, I didn't really think like, I was like, no, this can't be happening this soon. Mm. Like I have to be single for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, after the first like night we hung out, we've pretty much been inseparable since. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what, what led you Jaren to say, this is somebody I think I'm interested in. Um, 
I think the very first time I saw Kendra, it was a different energy than with her than the people I saw, I mean, already on campus. I mean, Avila was a campus overall. I mean, for a good reason, it was all intertwined. So if you played sports, you knew everybody. Mm -hmm. Yet everybody who I saw just was nobody who I saw having the future and the mindset and just the drive that I had to do different things in life. And from the time I first saw Kendra, it was like I knew instantly that that energy was kind of like what I was looking for. I just didn't know mm -hmm. how to get to it. And of course... I'm still introverted, but it was way worse then. So I just didn't know how <laughs> it to. It was can, way worse. Oh my then? god! Oh. Like yeah, I mean, oh Joanne, I, I would not. Tell be, me. Oh my goodness, yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I've come a long way, very long way. So it's 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 yeah. Then it was the only way I would have talked to Kendra would have been a direct message. I wouldn't have ever like come up to her and like yeah mm -hmm. talk to her. So I saw her and um we have um one of our close friends from Dallas um. He um was the like the medium, I guess you would say. Okay. He but he was the one that pretty much Kendra like both both him and Kendra were friends pretty fast on campus. And I saw her come into his dorm room to ask him if he wanted extra food one day. And I'm like, okay, that's the girl. That's that's okay. the, that's exactly okay. her. And it just happened to come back around. And I was like, hey, what's her name? And he told me. And from there was exactly when I sent her DM. And I was like, just small talk, just trying to figure out, hey, how you doing? And the first night, I think we just happened to watch a movie together. Um, we started talking to each other around All-Star Weekend for basketball. So the next mm -hmm. night, we watched the All-Star game together. And from there, it just went from us hanging out during the week to us going to parties together to us going to meet family together. And it just slowly but surely it became this intertwining of both of us being able to kind of become on this relationship part where we knew for a fact that we prayed for mm -hmm. each other because my circumstance wasn't too far from hers. I okay. also was in a mindset of like trying to figure out like who who do I really need in life because my previous relationship just wasn't what it needed to be. So I feel like both of us, due to us praying mm -hmm. for it, we gave each other that space that we needed to kind of figure each other out. So, yeah. so you said that you guys met and we started seeing each other's families and stuff like that. Did you take her to the Walmart, to the mall mm -hmm. in Georgia? Yeah. You saw it? You oh, witnessed yeah. it? Oh, she had a way. Yeah. Oh, she had a real experience. Like the Walmart part was good. We won't go into that. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 Walmart, the Walmart part was good. Yeah, it was. I feel like Kendra really had a real strong engulfing. Because, like, my okay. family, even to this day, like, if I say, so I'm going to Georgia next month, for instance. Okay. My family know I'm coming to Georgia next month, but due to the fact that she's not coming, it's not so important. Mm -hmm. So every ever since ever since they first met my, my wife, yeah. it's mm -hmm. like, oh, Kendra is the one we care about way more. So it's like, it's just, but I don't take, I don't take offense to it because it's yeah. like, it's this gravitational pull of, like, I know what kind of family I come from. They will take you in. They will hug you for 55 seconds. Yeah. It's just that kind of family. So I really did take it into an appreciation that they loved it to that extent so it was good so okay and, you're coming home like okay <laughs> and it's mutual because like my dad always makes a joke that if i would have had jaren over you oh, life would okay. be like yeah <laughs> so like his my so family and so the, in, the in-law thing is really good mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the wedding day and how you guys decide <laughs> or the proposal all of that <laughs> Do you want to say? Yeah, actually, we had a proposal. Well, well, me, there, well, there's some things you may have to tell me. Okay, now, Jolyn, we're going to pass on. Oh, no, 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 no. this one's fine. Well, yeah. let me, like, back up. Like, when we first started dating, Jaron was never getting married. Mm. Like, that never was an option to him because I guess I'm speaking for you. Um, the way he saw it is he never saw a really good, successful marriage. Mm -hmm. And so he didn't have a good representation of what marriage looked like. So that was never going to happen. So he was just going to date you? I guess. It was, And then I was like, no. no. <laughs> I, I felt like it was going to end at some point because every relationship I ever was around was ended at some point. Mm -hmm. I look at like my whole, mm -hmm. like, I'm the kind of person now, of course, being a therapist, you look at everything from attachment and how that all goes. And like my grandparents split parents never were together every aunt and uncle I really was around if they were in a relationship together it was toxic so everything I saw was like if you get married it's just it just gets bad so it was everything in my mindset mm -hmm. was that once you cross that boundary of getting married it's like it can't get good anymore so I felt like if I was to get married I would just waste somebody's time so it was yeah, it was it was a lot of okay. personal, I guess you would say, more so than not. It wasn't that I didn't love Kendra. It's just yeah. I felt like once we got married, it was only going to last two years, or we were going to be toxic together. But that's so. interesting mm -hmm. because the, the the I wrote I wrote this word down risk mm -hmm. um, because I do believe the human experience is that we tend to risk love over and over again. But that situation right there, where you said it, I, I'll DM her. Mm -hmm. 
but if we do start hanging out, it's probably not going to last very long. But the thing is, you still took the risk Mm -hmm. to get to to know her. So then what was the turn? What was the turning spot other than Kendra saying, "Uh, no, (laughs) you know, to say, I, I'm going to have to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance and get married. (laughs) I'm trying to figure what really was the trigger other than, um, I, I really believe because we moved to Wichita in 13. And when I first moved to Wichita, I was like, okay, this is like a halfway commitment. Something has got to be moving with this. And I think the following year, we mm-hmm. finally realized in 14 that we had a house together. Like that changed everything. I don't know what it was mentally for myself. But around that same time, that's when we started to get the mood of and energy of being able to say that we really want to make this series. And that was mm-hmm. when around the same time of how my wedding proposal was, it literally was as simple as a Taco Bell hot packet that says, will you marry okay, me? I'm not going to throw anything right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was fine for me because I don't like attention. Like I didn't want a big. Yeah. 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 It worked for us. <laughs> it, it, I'm not, but it was see, funny. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we now, we should be having endorsements now from Walmart and yeah. now Taco Bell. I mean, yes. see, I tell I'm telling you, honestly, honestly, Taco Bell owes me several iPads. <laughs> 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 okay, so the thing is, then, w- did you get married in Wichita, or okay? So the fa- the family, the Georgia family, got to come here and see what. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we got married here in Wichita. Mm-hmm. Um. We originally were going to do a destination wedding, but we were like, oh, this will be the first time like our both extended families will be able to meet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um. And that's a little nerve wracking in itself. Mm-hmm. Um. But it was the most beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. to see both of our families meet mm-hmm. and like really become family. Mm. And it, it, you believe it happened then. And Absolutely. There. Yeah. It, it was instantly. Mm-hmm. It's kind of funny. Cause even to the, so that was in 2015. So we've been married eight years. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, since that day when, or that weekend when they came, mm-hmm. um, it's just been amazing to see like the extended families relationship grow Mm -hmm. i mean like my parents talk to his family more than we do sometimes oh wow Mm -hmm. um and they're very close um so it's yeah it's just been a beautiful thing to see blossom good so eight years Mm mm-hmm Y'all don't even know the deal yet. <laughs> it only gets better and better. Like, talk to me and my husband. We'll just tell you it only gets better and better. Yeah. And some people are like, Jolene, shut up right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get to year seven and get past that, we're good. That's yeah. what that used to be the saying. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's still out there or not. But um, what have you learned about yourself in the process of saying, I do? Like, say, okay, we, we've made the decision. We want to do this together. We want to do life together. Mm-hmm. What what have you learned about yourself? It kind of goes into what we just talked about a little bit, kind of segueing into the fact that I can do it. I really mm-hmm. can do this. I can commit my life. Not actually commit my whole life, but I, commit, I can commit a part of my life to someone else and make this happen and make this work, and we can – have a successful marriage and it can really work out. I think overall that whole narrative of marriage not working out for me as a kid, it really was strong until I was able to like make this side happen. I could be a good husband up until like me being able to become that version for myself and like becoming like really creating my own like community of good people. It's like, it's been up until recent that I was able to see what good husbands look like and like okay. really for myself as well, becoming one, I think that was kind of like a, it was really in a, a really good core moment for myself to realize that this can happen and I really can do it. So yeah, I mean, it's as simple as, yeah, there's that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, For me, I've really learned to not be self, self, uh, not to be selfish. Um, I struggled with that. We need to talk or something because I'm still, <laughs> I'm spoiled rotten. I don't know about you. <laughs> oh, he spoils me <laughs> okay. for sure. <laughs> um, but like, I was just so selfish and so self-centered for the longest um, because that was, it was all like, I had to play basketball. Right. I had to do this. I had to do that. I had to do this. And you're either coming or you're going. Um so I had to really like sit back and be like, no, I need to put someone else before me. Okay. So I really learned that about myself. I also really learned and understood what leaving and cleaving means. Mm. So leaving my family of origin and really cleaving onto him and knowing that this is our family. Mm-hmm. This is our partnership. 
This mm-hmm. is our friendship. Yeah. Um, has been um, beautiful to just watch transform. Hasn't been easy, mm-hmm. but. But you guys have been in Kansas the whole time together. <clears throat> yes. And married. Yeah. Yes. So that, that's good. What, is there anything about marriage um, that surprises you, that surprised you about you or just about marriage itself? Um, the fact that, um, the fact that remaining being boyfriend, girlfriend is not so bad. Mm -hmm. The fact that continuing to chase each other and pursue each other and dating each other is not, not that bad of a deal. I think, Mm -hmm. um, for myself, I think even the like the stigma that you see is that once you get into marriage, it's like you check it off and mm-hmm. everything's fine. We don't have to keep pursuing each other. Yet I feel like once we continue to do that, like into our dating life and really pursuing each other and like actually trying to figure out each other's interests and just trying to continue to spice it up in that mindset of always being able to know that we're still dating, even though we're married. I think that's been one of those things for us, for me, myself, that I've learned about marriage that, OK, like this is a different way to approach it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Other than having to realize that we're just here together we just remain together and we just mm-hmm. have a duty together versus actually having fun. And I feel like in, in, in that transition, cause kind of like you said with that seven year thing, like both of us were just in that pace. And I feel like now we're finally getting to that point of like really trying to figure out what does that day in life look like, which in turn is made for a better relationship. So yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what surprised me is how much I can change. And how much from from the selfish part? Is that what yeah. you mean, or just yeah, growing, from like growing, or? selfish, having a partner there who's um, willing to support me and also tell me like, um, Kendra, no, like where you're going is not okay, or like maybe mm-hmm. turn it this way. But like being yeah. able to accept influence from him, um, and being able to bounce things off of him, and then yeah very important of dating each other and keeping that friendship. Cause it is our partnership. You said it is our yeah, partnership. I, that. I am going to just jump right into some hot topics. <laughs> okay. And this is just from doing marriage counseling, reading mm-hmm. about marriage, all that. So some hot topics that I posed to you guys were money, time for yourself, sex, Children, communication, family, conflict, and fun together. Okay. What do you think have been some hot buttons for you guys? I would say finances at first (coughs) was a big one. Because you had so much money? No. (laughs) No. (laughs) Or Um, was it the how-to? The how-to and... Growing up. um, Differently or similarly? Very differently. Okay. Very, like, Jaren's a saver. I'm the spender. Um, Like, just learning. You need one of those in each one. We do. Mm -hmm. Oh, truly, truly. (laughs) But I'm like, well, why can't we just do this? He's like, no, we have to save our money. He's the more logical one um, (laughs) when it comes to that. Or it's not that we can't spend it, but we're going to wait and do it. Yes, do it smartly. Um, Understanding what finances are, because we both didn't, have we both had very different representations of how to handle money Mm -hmm. um so i think that's probably like one of our big um hot topics that we've had to navigate together okay on like how do we do this as a team how do we do this together and eight years later what what does that look like it's still a struggle some days (laughs) but it's a lot it's a lot better than it was at the beginning but there are days that we're still like not on the same page. Do you guys ever find yourselves being partners in crime though? Like that Jared will come over to the side of spending like, yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We, yeah, we, we, I feel like we have built a pretty, even though, even though I can't just say it, both of us come from our own like level of like feeling like we don't know as much about finances in our own like side of it. Mm-hmm. We do still like find the time in our, for ourselves to be able to kind of be realistic with it and find that medium. So I feel like even though we've not built the best knowledge around it, we still have a pretty mutual relationship with it to a point where we don't feel like we're doing this or doing that. And one person is on one side and the others on the other. So I feel like we have found a pretty good bound within it. Now I'm trying to get 
mastery with it that's a whole different thing but yeah i think we're we're getting to a better point especially as we're getting to that mindset of like what does the parenthood life look like so i think we're getting mm -hmm. we're, we're buckling a lot better than we were before so yeah so what was your conversation about children another hot topic kids has been a really strong conversation for both of us because um it kind of goes into the family conversation our, our, we come from two families that really see once you graduate from high school it's time for kids it's time for like really building that not just have, not just getting a family but getting a family and having children mm -hmm. on both sides of our families yeah. so once we got married it's, it was a lot of strong pressure from both sides and we had to set a lot of boundaries on like hey man look when we have kids we'll figure that portion out and we've had to like continue to set boundaries in one way or another it's not been as intense but it still has been mm -hmm. to a certain extent where you may get people bringing up this conversation or that conversation and it's like you just try to figure out ways to navigate it yet i do feel like both of us due to the fact of being on the same page with it mm -hmm. we've been able to navigate that with good boundaries without having to point fingers at each other and that's really helped out so yeah mm -hmm. i think it's kind of interesting because some people listening to us right now are saying man they've been together for eight years and they don't have children mm -hmm. yet and they're mm -hmm. really talking about that it sounds like they want them but they're going to make an, an intentional decision mm -hmm. about when is that going to happen and so we, did you ever have to say before you got married, you want kids, I want kids, or we don't want kids? I mean, what was that conversation like? Um, yes, we had that conversation before we got married. And mm -hmm. I think it's very important to have that conversation before you get married for anyone out there because you don't mm -hmm. want to go into a marriage with one wanting one and one not, one not wanting kids mm -hmm. and expecting it to change. Um, it very well could, but it couldn't. But um, I was always under the impression that Yes, I want kids. I just don't want them until my career has taken off and I feel stable enough mm -hmm. to have them. Okay. Um I mean Yeah. I, th I think that's pretty that's pretty much what we've been at overall trying to figure out how can we how can we get ourselves into a position where I mean I don't I don't knock our families I know they did the best they could with what they had mm -hmm. at the same time how can we get our kids to be in the best position to lunch better than we did I mean both mm -hmm. of us I feel like in one way or another we're very financially illiterate for one reason or another either whether it was like having too much of it and not knowing what to do or not having enough of it and not knowing what to do and it's like just being in that middle mm -hmm. of not having that knowledge base around it I feel like both of us have given ourselves that time to really figure ourselves out I mean we really have the opportunity I feel like even though it's been moments where we may feel like man it would be great to have some kids I feel like we've had a lot of chances to watch a lot of other people do things in a way okay. that I won't say they're making mistakes but we saw a lot of things go a lot of wrong directions and I, I think from mm -hmm. from that side of it we've been able to learn from other people and now we just really have learned to grow as a couple and I couldn't even tell you I'm sure you know also Auntie Jo Lynn how many people come in and they really will say that we don't even know each other because once we got married we, okay. we got the kids and we just really just have become parents and now we don't even know who each other and I feel mm -hmm. like me and Kendra have really given ourselves the opportunity to really figure out hey what do you like what, what, what are you into and we really are there for each other a lot more to being, for, being for the fact of being able to grow in that direction so I feel like it's been able to help us really know who we are so that when kids come into the picture it won't be a divide on me being dad her being mom we'll be parents mm -hmm. together so okay, good. yeah yeah um communication and conflict can you guys take that on together like like um what does it look how did how did you figure out how to communicate because you didn't just get married and say okay we're going to communicate mm -hmm. so it's like from the beginning to now like what does communication look like what's necessary what are some key things key ingredients that you would want people to know this has to be present for it to be good mm -hmm. and then talk about conflict a little bit too mm -hmm. okay so yeah. for communication when it first started um I felt like Jaren was very avoidant in a lot of the communication styles, like if, especially mm -hmm. around conflict. Like that's just how he handled things, coped things is he would just avoid. Um, whereas I was like, no, like I want to handle this now. <laughs> like, let's get this done now. I'm pursuing um, you. Yes. You're, you're distancing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pursue withdraw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Um, but I think what's helped us communicate better, honestly, was going to our own couples therapy mm -hmm. mm. and being taught foundational skills from a therapist okay. um, who had adequate training um, to help us communicate 
um, specifically with active listening, Mm -hmm. um, not coming in like when conflict happens, not coming in with a harsh startup, like really just, hey, Jaren, this really bothered me today. Mm -hmm. Can we sit down and talk about it? Um, Is kind of how we handle conflict now and how we communicate. But before it was that oh. I'm I'm trying to get to the, the bottom of it and Jaren's like, okay, we're going to be okay. Or that Jaren was afraid yes. that it was going to lead to an end. Yes. Okay. Oh, very much. So. <laughs> you, you guys that are not watching, you should see his eyes. Oh, he's like, like, he's so yeah. scared. Like, no, very like, much so. Like, I, I, I still have, uh, this, just segueing off of that, I still have like a, um, I leave it downstairs to this day. It's downstairs in our, um, right on our TV stand in the basement. It's like this, um, like just little, um, little screw, little, um, little storage thing that has, um, a mirror placement shake in it because one night mm. both me and Kendra had an argument and I stayed downstairs and I was playing a video game and I was like, I'm just not going back upstairs. I just will not deal with this. I will just stay down here. And to this day, I leave it down there to remind myself of like, this is where we were and this yeah, is where we yeah. are now. Like this is how far we've come when it comes down to communication and how it's been handled now. Because I mean, I feel like we've gotten to the point now where instead of waiting for something to blow up, we really will learn to read each other. And it mm-hmm. happens pretty fast of being able to bring it up. And even before we even read each other, we feel like we feel comfortable. We trust each other enough to be able to bring up those those topics. And I feel like it does take the uncomfortability to find that space to be able to mm-hmm. talk about it. So, yeah. You know, I think even though I was older when I got married, I was kind of immature, I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and my husband, thank God that he was – all grown up and stuff like that. But the the thing is just remembering, I like this person. Mm -hmm. I really do like you and I don't want to be the person I like. I don't, I don't want to be mad at them. Mm -hmm. So it's then owning myself. Like that really hurt me when you did blank. But so rather than you shouldn't have done it and blah, 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 Mm -hmm. blah, and do the head and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, you know, a lot of times my husband would come back and say, I, that wasn't what I intended to do. I wasn't trying to hurt you. I would never just like intentionally try to hurt you. Yeah. So I teach couples that too mm-hmm. in sessions about like, <laughs> let's get back to, do we really like each other? Mm-hmm. I'm, not saying, I'm not talking about the love thing right now. I'm talking about the new love. But, you know, do I like, do I like this person? Do I want to be with them? Do I want the best for them. Mm-hmm. And they, and I believe that they want that for me. So why do I want, because what happens is it creates distance, yes. you know? So that thing that's staying in the basement, Jaren, mm-hmm. and then saying, okay, I'm going to be apart from this person I married. They say, I want to spend the rest of my life with, mm-hmm. how do we bring that back together? And, and I usually tell people, I said, um, you know, I, I, lo- I love you and I, I will never do anything intentionally to hurt you. Mm-hmm. So will Kendra ever hurt Jaren? The answer is yes. Mm-hmm. Will Jaren ever hurt Kendra? Yes. Mm-hmm. But will, will they do that intentionally? And the thing is, now, y'all, if we are really honest, there have been some times we did try to intentionally hurt somebody. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you, you did this to me. Okay, you watch. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. Then I don't like them. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, do I really like this person? So I'm not trying to give y'all a session or anything. Oh no, no. <laughs> I'm just I'm just trying to put it out there because I think yes. there's some foundational things that we don't we just don't get. It's kind of like the money thing. What are some foundational things that we can learn and then we can change our situation or we, we can get healthy? Same thing with communication and conflict. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Y'all get me going. Like y'all gonna make me want to go do a lot of things. <laughs> Talk about fun together. Mm-hmm. Or and even time together, and then this balancing that part with time for myself. Mm-hmm. What does that look like in an eight year old marriage? Um. So now that um, Jaren is has a full caseload with their um and therapy, mm-hmm. I know that can be very emotionally draining. So time for him, like I know when he comes home. Um, he likes to go play video games to help decompress mm-hmm. the day. Um, so, like, I know that. Okay. And I allow, I don't, Yeah. I guess allow is. I give I, space for that. Yes, okay. yes. I give space for that because that's how I know he needs to recharge. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, for me, I like to kind of do the same thing. Okay. Like, I just like to either sit and watch TV Um, or watch my shows that he doesn't like to watch, um, or I like to go get a pedicure or just Mm -hmm. something that's, um, 
brings me joy and refills me. Okay. Um, but we do communicate on that, that we have. Was that so. always so, though? No. Okay. Oh, no. Okay, so I want I want our audience to know that, yes. that this couple sitting here saying we're not just perfect and we just do all that, but there was a time when they're both they're just taking us <laughs> <as> well. No, no. <laughs> we didn't always do that. We had to learn that mm-hmm. about each other. And I, some people may be listening to us too, and sometimes it's just a drive on your drive home. Yes. You know, that I get 15, 20 minutes in the car alone, and I need that. Mm-hmm. Or when I get in the house, I need to be able to go to the bedroom. I need to get changed in... You know, then I'll come out. Mm-hmm. Just taking a little bit of time just to, I call it, um, you know, when you, you enter and exit kind of thing. It's mm-hmm. the, the connecting and then the disconnecting. Like mm-hmm. my husband this morning, okay, three kisses and a prayer mm-hmm. and I'm out. Mm-hmm. When I come back in, I say, hey, you. Okay, because I may not see him because he's in the kitchen cooking. But there's that thing of how do I reconnect, you know, after we've been apart and how do we reconnect Mm -hmm. and all of that. So do you guys have any rituals around that that you just know that you do? Um, Well, we do a lot of Gottman. Okay. (laughs) So Gottman says a six-second kiss and a 30-second hug Mm -hmm. um, when leaving and on reunions. Mm -hmm. And so we really try to stick with that. Okay. Um, And that's become our ritual. Do that again. Six second kiss, 30 second hug. Without any demands, With but that kiss thing, okay? Yes. Because like, six, mm-hmm. six seconds, like, mm-mm, go sit down somewhere. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. Or it may be like, you know, a new love. You're like, okay, let's <laughs> yeah. go. Okay. And then how long the hug? 20 seconds? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. You know, 30 seconds is a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I used to have couples practice in my office um, 20 mm-hmm. seconds. And of course, it's weird because somebody's looking at you. Mm-hmm. But I said, so I'm just looking at the clock. Mm-hmm. But but the thing is, they haven't done it yes. in a, mm-hmm. such a long time. And I said, and no padding, like like patting the back, like you know, mm-hmm. um, but just just holding, just holding and being being in that. And it's like wow, that's a good oxytocin. Yeah. It is release, it is. yeah. And it didn't used to be like that. I want to preference that yeah, too. Can, can, can she, she like putting the hand <laughs> like, mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. No, mm-mm. we we have had to work really hard yeah. to get where we're at today. Wow, okay. really hard. Has it been worth it, or do you wish you wouldn't have done it? I mean, that's a dumb question, Jolyn. No. no, it is no. a dumb question for me. Like, was it worth doing it? No, we're sitting up here talking to you eight years later. <laughs> yeah. It absolutely was worth it, but in the time of some of those really hard moments, I did question myself, like, is this worth it? Mm. Because the moments were so hard. Um, yeah. and, I, and I don't want to put this mirage like, it's this most beautiful thing. There's no hard times. Mm-hmm. There's, that's a false reality that mm-hmm. there really are a lot of hard times that you get to walk through. But together. I, together. I'm very grateful now for those hard moments because that has transformed who we are, Mm -hmm. how we love each other, how we communicate with each other, um, how we've grown in friendship and in our relationship. Yeah. No, because, yeah, people on the outside in, and most times you wouldn't think about it, but in our seventh year, sixth, seventh year, we were going through me in the middle <clears throat> of the MFC program and also like trying to figure out how to like kind of Kendra was also on her own therapy journey. So at that same time, we were trying to like segue into our own lives. And yeah, it, it was a lot going on. And I feel like at that time period is when like both of us really learned to make a different kind of space for each other. Mm-hmm. Of course, that was also the season. I feel like both of us probably were in the energy of saying like, is this the energy we really want to put in every day? And did you stop, though? Because, Jaren, I've been through the program, Mm -hmm. okay, the Mm -hmm. MFT program. And so the thing is, it is intense, but the thing is, I think sometimes we forget to tell us this ends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, like, it's not going to be like this. Like, Mm -hmm. you got to tell yourself, because maybe we were saying to ourselves, am I going to, am I going to make it? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was not married during that time. And I saw my my colleagues, my my cohort members that were married and they were getting pregnant during the, and I'm like, 
I don't even know when I'm doing my laundry. Mm-hmm. Let no, and I'm single, yeah. and I don't know what's going on. So it is intense. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, being able to tell yourself this comes to an end. Yeah. This will this will come to a to, mm-hmm. to a close. For sure. I want I want us, um, Jaren. I want you to to really think about this one. Being a therapist, marriage and family therapist that you are, mm-hmm. um, the importance of practicing what you preach. Um, because the thing is, they may think, I, I just saw a couple, but then I go home and my marriage is just all this wonderful stuff. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about the importance of kind of being congruent. And yeah. then Kendra, remember your question. And Kendra, I'm going to have you um, just talk about, because you, you just said it out loud. We went and got some help. Mm-hmm. Okay. What, is that, what does that look like? And what does that feel like? And how can you encourage others if they need to do that and not be afraid? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, my, that's a great question. Um, because I feel like as a therapist, there's a mm-hmm. lot of people in the field in one way or another who are, kind of giving advice in places and trying to lead people from a perspective of a life they haven't lived and stuff they haven't mm-hmm. worked on. And I myself, due to my own series of ups and downs in the therapy field mm-hmm. on both sides of the seat and as being a client, mm-hmm. I feel like I myself, have, I really take my professionalism and being an ethical okay. therapist of, of the utmost extent. Um, I feel like I really cannot take any of my clients any further in life than mm-hmm. I myself have approached and at least put my own perspective on. I really can't talk to you about complex trauma if I haven't faced my own. I really can't talk to you about how your parts may be in this way or that way triggered if I haven't dealt with my own parts with my own therapy. Own triggering, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't really tell you that you should be coming to therapy every week if I'm not at, like, like often seeing my own therapist. Mm-hmm. So I really do feel like at the same time of being a therapist, we have to be very aware of our own places in life and how much of being a therapist, how much we can place that trajectory, that trajectory and that old transference onto our clients. And it's just not fair to them being in that position because at the end of the day, clients come to us as therapists to get advice from us as, as therapists. We're, we're in a very powerful position. So I do think it's very accountable on our side to be mm-hmm. able to at least do the work if we're going to be able to lead people down that line. Even myself, I was like uh, just a little bit of like openness for me like my first year of therapy I saw a few client, a few couples but I didn't see a lot of couples I didn't, okay. I didn't I didn't put that as a preference and the reason why was because I didn't feel like me and Kendra was connected I didn't feel Ooh. like both of us were close so how can I tell you to go connect mm-hmm. with your wife when when I go home every day I would rather chill my video games like I can't I can't tell <laughs> yeah. you to go do that when I'm not doing the same thing now I even told mm-hmm. Kendra like once me and Kendra yeah. got into like more of a close field I was like okay I feel like I can bring more couples in and since then I've saw a lot more couples was yet I can't be opening myself up to a space where I don't feel like I've done that work. And that's mm-hmm. where I feel like myself, I can step in every day and be an authentic therapist because I don't have to I don't have to put on a front. I don't have to put on a face of being this or being that. When, when a client comes in to me and talks about a life experience, I can help them with that. Or I can refer them somewhere else, somewhere else because I have to work within right. my own scope of competency. So, yeah. and, and I don't want in because none, all three of us sitting here, we're not perfect. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so we're not putting that out there at all. But the thing is, is being on our way mm-hmm. um, to being better, yeah, to yeah. being well. Mm-hmm. You're like, what question did you ask me? <laughs> <laughs> um, about therapy and why it's so yeah. important. And that, yeah, and that we said we went and got some. Uh-huh, you know? Yes. Um, so I was actually, uh, several years ago, was recommended by my doctor mm. to go see a therapist because my doctor believed in the whole body wellness. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I had seen a therapist. um, Well, this was my second therapist, but someone that I really connected with and that really helped me see, you know, some of the trauma and the patterns that I was doing. And so then I began to change inside. And mind you, this was the same time Jaron was going through the program. So he was already (laughs) going through his transformative journey um, at the same time. And one thing that we realized is like, we need someone who can step mm-hmm. in, who's unbiased, mm-hmm. to help us see our blind spots. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically, and we don't always want to see those, but yeah, yeah they <laughs> I don't, don't have any blind spots, right? right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> and right. they're hard to see and they're hard to take in, but um, it's nice to have an unbiased um, person to help navigate that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
therapy can be very scary going in because you're like, are they going to brainwash me? Are are they going to change my way of thinking? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, are but, they still going to like me? Are they, yes. will they, will they think I'm a bad person? Mm-hmm. Yes. Are they going to yeah. judge me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and come to find out like finding a therapist that works for you. Cause I think of therapy like dating. Okay. Like you want to find yeah. a therapist that works for you yeah. and that you feel comfortable and safe with. Mm-hmm. And just knowing that that's a safe place uh, that you can be raw and authentic. Um, and especially with marriage therapy, um, yeah just like how like conflict or something that we're having an issue with, like how do we process this and what is it really triggering? And um, Mm -hmm. just having someone there to help us process through that process that has Mm -hmm. been so helpful um, to the point now that we're very um, on the same page of like, we want to be proactive. So we go to therapy for proactive instead of Mm -hmm. being reactive. Mm -hmm. Because from what Jaron has said, that most people that show up in his office is like they're being reactive within yeah. their relationship or crisis mode. Yes, you know I'm I'm in a crisis and I need you to I'm coming in here for you to help me. Mm-hmm. Yes, now yeah. help us right now. Yeah. So I just would want to encourage anyone out there, even if you think your relationship is going great, mm-hmm. um, and it probably is, that maybe exploring marriage therapy or couples therapy. Um, would be beneficial just to help strengthen and be on that proactive side rather than that reactive side. I love that you said that Kendra, because I, it just popped in my mind. Like I really think that people should do premarital counseling, Mm -hmm. you know, to be on the proactive side that to kind of just have someone asking some of the hard questions. And the thing is you can't solve everything or know everything that's going to happen, but just at least start a conversation mm-hmm. about what is this going to look like? And so many people, they've bought the dress, they've already ordered the invitations and it's really hard to speak into that. Mm-hmm. But for people who will make an investment to say, somebody talk to us, t- tell, tell us what we may be facing. Tell us what we're like. You know, mm-hmm. we use prepare and rich at hope net. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, Tell us where the blind spots are. Tell us where our weaknesses are in the relationship and tell us where our strengths are. Mm-hmm. You know? yes. And I love that you said I we need to have somebody that we trust. Mm-hmm. And I, I just thought about a lot. so many times I get to sit in the seat of I'm for the marriage, even if the two of you mm-hmm. don't know if you are or not, but I get to hang in there and be the champion mm-hmm. for the marriage. And I love that. And that's what you need in, in a therapist. So Yes. And can I back Absolutely. go back on that? So Jaren and I didn't do premarital therapy. Mm-hmm. We were supposed to, but with our pastor, we went like for one session and it just didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I think if we would have done premarital therapy mm-hmm. or premarriage therapy or whatever, yeah, counseling, counseling whatever. Yeah. Um, that a lot of like our issues probably (laughs) wouldn't have showed up the first couple of years Mm -hmm. because we've already processed it. Um, Because I mean, I, I am, I a hundred percent agree with you and I truly believe that pre-marriage therapy is, can be so beneficial. Mm -hmm. And the thing is you get to say, yes, we're going forward or no, we need to wait Mm -hmm. or we peace. We're out. We, Mm -hmm. we did, this does not need to happen. Kind of like Jaren can say, uh, no, mm-hmm. we're not doing this. Mm-hmm. So, man, we, we're going to get on a soapbox. I can tell right now. <laughs> but we're coming to the end of our time. <laughs> and um, is there anything that you want to say that I want you to be able to speak into today for a couple that you, you're you thinking about? Maybe they're, they're just now dating. They're thinking about getting married um, or they just got married or they're hanging out at the eight year mark with you guys. Mm-hmm. What what? What is some hope you can give or just some tips or wisdom that you would just want to just speak out right now? That would be great. Yeah, I think one thing I I like to tell people is know that know that know that you're fighting um, with each other and not against each other. Know that Mm -hmm. you have your coalition as your team Mm -hmm. 
and it's not everybody's team. And the way you do your team, it's up to you. Like, every team doesn't win the same way. And how your team wins, it doesn't have to be everybody's strategy. Whatever works for you works for you. And just being mm-hmm. able to understand and, and trust your own process and what you do is, is right. Yeah. I think a lot of people do, even with us, um, I think a lot of people see us and they're like, oh, well, you guys just have it all together and you're just doing this. <laughs> Come and, home with us. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and I think overall it's like that people compare our middle to their beginning or whatever they're doing. Ooh, in their lives and, and it's just like we always end up in these positions of like trying to tell people like you're doing great you're you're you're, you're just fine for for where you are and i feel like people sometimes want to get comparative so I, I feel like just being able to know that you, you you have your own team and being able to build that and being able to enjoy it for sure yeah great thank yeah. you for yeah. sharing that yeah. yeah i really like that it's hard to come <laughs> 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 um i think one thing i would encourage anyone at any stage that they are is don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Don't be afraid to go to therapy. I know it can be very scary. Mm-hmm. Um, it can also be very beneficial. Yeah. Um, and also don't forget to date each other. Mm-hmm. Remember what it was like when you first met. You know, what brought you together? What did you like about each other? What did you love about each other? Mm-hmm. Going back to those days, I yeah. think can be so enlightening and so helpful. Amen. (laughs) That is good stuff. Thank you guys for sharing your story and just hanging out with us and your wisdom, because that was really great. Because the thing is, it it, it would be interesting to know what you would have said year one Mm -hmm. compared to right now. Mm -hmm. Or you may have said, like, we can't be on the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) We can't be doing that right now. But for our listeners, thank you for listening. And um, please grab a hold of Maybe there was something that that Jaren said or something that Kendra said that you just said that I'm going to I'm going to spend some time with that. Or um, I need to reach out here in Wichita, HopeNet, 316-684-4673, 684-HOPE. <laughs> so um, we're here for you. But there's lots of people in the city that you got to find your person date your person mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and see where there's a safe place so thank you for listening and once again this is Lynn Bright also known as JLB in the house and how I always end I love to say this to you bless you thanks for listening to Studio 2501 conversations about mental health and wellness Studio 2501 is hosted by Joe Lynn Bright. Joe Lynn is HopeNet's Director of Community Impact, a published author, and has been a licensed clinical therapist for over 20 years. This podcast is owned and operated by HopeNet in Wichita, Kansas. HopeNet is a faith based nonprofit providing a wide range of mental health and wellness services, including counseling, life coaching, and trainings. For more information on HopeNet and to learn how you can help expand our mission, visit hopenetwichita.org and follow us on social media at HopeNet Wichita. Thank you.